Chemistry lecture number 64, Atmospheric Pressure, Boiling Point, and Phase Diagrams. Atmospheric pressure is measured with a device called a barometer. The barometer was invented by Italian physicist Evangelista Torricelli, in 16, who lived from 1608 to uh, 1647. Torricelli took a glass tube that was open at one end and closed at the other end and filled the tube with liquid mercury. He then inverted the tube and placed the open end into a bowl filled with mercury. Here's a picture of what it looks like. He noticed that the mercury in the tube did not completely spill into the bowl. The height of the mercury in the tube uh, would sometimes fluctuate from day to day. Torricelli believed that atmospheric pressure exerted on the surface of mercury um, in the bowl kept the mercury in the tube from spilling out. And the height of the mercury in the tube would go up and down as the atmospheric pressure went up and down. So the reason why the mercury in the tube didn't come spilling out is that there's atmospheric pressure pushing on the surface, keeping it up. And as the atmospheric pressure fluctuated up and down from day to day, sometimes there'd be less pressure and then the level would come down. And then sometimes there'd be more atmospheric pressure and then the level of mercury would go up. But that's how a barometer works. Uh, you notice here that the height is listed as 760 millimeters. That's because on an average day, uh, the height of mercury is going to be about 760 millimeters tall, or 76 centimeters, which is about three quarters of a yardstick wide. Um, 760 millimeters of mercury is the same as 101.325 kilopascals. That's another way to measure atmospheric pressure. And it's also defined as being equal to one atmosphere of pressure. That's another way of measuring uh, air pressure. Since, at, for the, since the first barometers used mercury, atmospheric pressure is measured in millimeters of mercury. In honor of Torricelli, sometimes the word tor is used instead of millimeters of mercury. On a normal day, the height of the mercury in the tube will be 760 millimeters or uh, 760 tor. And this is defined as normal atmospheric pressure, since that's what happens on a normal day. Uh, pressure is also measured in atmospheres and kilopascals. So, 760 millimeters of mercury is the same as one atmosphere of pressure, which is the same as 101.325 kilopascals. And all of this is normal atmospheric pressure. If a uh, mercury barometer is taken from the ground level to a higher altitude, the level of mercury will drop. At higher altitudes, there are fewer air molecules and therefore less air pressure. So here's a picture showing how atmospheric pressure decreases at higher altitudes. <clears throat> at the bottom of the mountain, there are more air molecules, so therefore there's going to be more air pressure push pushing on the surface of the liquid mercury and keeping the level of mercury in the tube up. Um, as you go up to a higher altitude, there are fewer molecules. So since there are fewer air molecules, there's less air pressure pushing on the surface of the liquid mercury in the bowl. And as a result, there's not enough pressure to keep the level in the tube up and some of the mercury goes down. So air pressure decreases at higher altitudes. Boiling occurs when the vapor pressure uh, exerted by a liquid equals the atmospheric pressure. And since the atmospheric pressure at the top of a mountain is lower, liquids will boil at a lower temperature. For example, water normally boils at 100 degrees Celsius at ground level uh, when the air pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. At the top of Mount Everest, however, the atmospheric pressure will be about 250 millimeters of mercury and water will boil at 70 degrees Celsius. <coughs> so when the atmospheric pressure is less, uh, you don't need the water to be as hot for water to start to boil. So, under normal atmospheric pressure, there are more air molecules pushing on the surface, so it's going to take a higher temperature to get the water to boil. But, if you go to the top of Mount Everest, there are fewer air molecules pushing on the surface, so uh, it'll boil at a lower temperature, at 70 degrees. At higher altitudes, foods cooked by boiling must be boiled for longer periods, since the boiled water uh, will be at a lower temperature. Uh, the next time you boil pasta, check the cooking directions and see if they give high altitude cooking instructions. And if they do, they usually say at higher altitudes cook for a longer period of time. We can plot a graph of boiling temperature versus atmospheric pressure for different uh, substances. <clears throat> so here's a graph showing uh, the boiling points of different substances at different temperatures. So previously, we said that for water, here's the curve for water, at one atmospheric pressure or 760 millimeters of mercury normal atmospheric pressure for water it boils at 
100 degrees. But at the top of Mount Everest, where the air pressure is 250, so that's about here, we go across, we hit the water curve and come back down, and here we have it at 70. Water will boil at 70. Now, <clears throat> notice that at 750, uh, 760 millimeters of mercury, acetic acid boils at 120 degrees Celsius. So at 760, Here's the boiling point of acetic acid. It's 120. And then water will boil at 100 degrees. So here's water. That'll boil at 100. And then ethyl alcohol boils at 78 degrees. So here's ethyl alcohol. If we come down, that's about 78. Chloroform, uh, that's here. Okay, so here's 760 for chloroform. We come down, and that's going to be about 60 degrees uh, Celsius. So it shows that acetic acid has stronger intermolecular forces than water, all right, but ethyl alcohol has uh, weaker intermolecular forces. And the hydrogen bonding that occurs, and same thing with chloroform, uh, the hydrogen bonding that occurs in water and acetic acid uh, makes the molecules stick together. So these have higher boiling points because there are stronger forces within uh, between, or rather between the molecules that make the molecules stick together. Chloroform and ethyl alcohol, those molecules don't like to stick together. They have weaker intermolecular forces. They don't stick together as well, so they're easier to uh, get to boil. Atmospheric pressure not only affects the boiling point of liquids, but it also determines whether a substance exists as a solid, liquid, or a gas. At high atmospheric pressure and low temperature, a substance will tend to exist as a solid. At moderate atmospheric pressure and moderate temperature, a substance will tend to exist as a liquid. And at low atmospheric pressure and high temperature, a substance will tend to exist as a gas. Increasing temperature can cause a solid to turn into a liquid and a liquid to turn into a gas. Increasing atmospheric pressure can cause a gas to be compressed into a liquid and a liquid to be compressed into a solid. A phase diagram for a substance shows its physical state at different temperatures and pressures. Uh, now we have here a phase diagram for an unknown substance X and the pressure is in kilopascals so sometimes you see it in millimeters of mercury, sometimes you see it in atmospheres, this time we see it in kilopascals and the temperature is in kelvins. Sometimes they give the temperature in Celsius this time the temperature is given in kelvins. And the orange region represents the solid state, blue region represents the liquid state, and the purple region represents the gas state. So if, um, a subs if this substance fell within the temperature and pressure range around here, it's going to be a solid. If it falls in this temperature and pressure range, it's a liquid. If it falls within this temperature and pressure range, it's going to be a gas. So <coughs> let's try and uh, do some questions here. So we can do this. All right, so let's try this question. At 40 degrees Kelvin and 20 kilopascals, is the substance a solid, liquid, or a gas? All right, so 40 and 20. Let's see here. So 40 Kelvin and 20 kilopascals. All right, so that's going to be a solid. All right, let's try another one. At 180 Kelvin and 60 kilopascals. This is a substance a solid, liquid, or a gas. All right, so let's see. 180 Kelvin, that's here, and 60 kilopascals, that's there. So we go up and up, falls into the blue region. So it's going to be a liquid. Let's try another one. At 200 Kelvin and 30 kilopascals, is the substance a solid, liquid, or a gas? All right, so 200 Kelvin and 30 kilopascals. So 200 Kelvin and 30 kilopascals is right here. Falls in the purple region, so our substance is going to be a gas. Let's try another one. At 130, or 130 Kelvin and 80 kilopascals, the substance is a solid, liquid, or a gas. This one might be a little bit trickier. So 130, that's about here, and then 80, that's gonna bring us, and so, I'm sorry, 80 is right here, I'm sorry. So 100, oh wait, hold on, 130 and then 80. All right, so, oh no, 130, okay, wait. This is 140, so 130 is between these two lines right here, so it's gonna go up like this. And it looks like, okay, it's right here. 
right at this point right here. So it's on the line. So 80 kilopascals and 130 lands us on the line between the orange and the blue region. So it's between the solid and the liquid. So the answer is that both solid and liquid can exist if it lands on this line at this point right here. So melting or freezing can occur under these conditions because uh, the conditions allow for both states to exist. So if you add heat, it'll melt. If you remove heat, uh, it'll freeze. Let's try another one. At 100 Kelvin and 20 kilopascals is the substance a solid, liquid, or a gas. So 100 Kelvin and 20 kilopascals. So 100, okay, so 100's right here. And then 20 kilopascals, oh, that's gonna put us right on the line right there, okay? So, uh, so this line is between the solid and the gas. So both solid and gas uh, can exist at uh, 100, uh, Kelvin and 20 kilopascals. All right. So sublimation can occur under these conditions. Let's try another one. At 220 Kelvin and 70 kilopascals is the substance of solid, liquid, or a gas. All right. So 220 Kelvin. So that's right here. And 70 kilopascals. That's right here. So we go up, up. There we are. Lands right on the line at that point right here. So. This line right here is the boundary between liquid and gas. So both liquid and gas can exist uh, when it's at 220 Kelvin and 70 kilopascals. So boiling can occur uh, under these conditions. So if it's all along this line here, um, both liquid and uh, gas can exist. So if you add heat, it'll boil. And then if you remove heat, uh, the gas would start to condense. Okay. <clears throat> now the triple point is the temperature and pressure where all three states of matter can exist. Uh, it's the point on the graph where all three lines intersect. So at what temperature and pressure can solid, liquid, and gas exist? Well, this line, this line, and this line all meet at this point right here. And this point right here, uh, we have to sort of approximate it. Um, so from here to here, this is 140, that's 120, so this is in halfway it's a uh, what 130 so it's a little bit more than 120 something between 120 and 140 um, so this is probably going to be about 135 if you don't get exactly 135 that's okay and then this point right here well that's a little bit above 30 on the pressure part so um, I get 32 that's just a rough estimate so uh, all three states of matter can occur at 135 and 32. All right. Let's talk about critical temperature. Critical temperature is the highest temperature the gaseous is, is the highest temperature the gaseous substance can reach and still be compressed into a liquid. And beyond the critical temperature, the gas cannot be compressed into a liquid. No amount of atmospheric pressure will be able to compress the gas. Let's see. Now, the critical temperature in the diagram is about 250 Kelvin. So you'll look for the dotted line on the top right. And the pressure needed to compress a gas when it is at the critical temperature is the critical pressure, which is 120 kilopascals. All right, so see this dotted line right here? So beyond here, or right at this point right here, uh, that's the highest temperature it can reach and still be compressed into a liquid when it's in the gaseous state. So if you come down here, that gets us to about 250. So for this substance, 250 degrees Kelvin is the critical temperature. We can still compress it into a liquid, but beyond 250, uh, we cannot compress it into a liquid. Anything higher than 250, no amount of pressure needed to, uh, will be able to uh, compress it to a liquid. And then right at the critical temperature, we go across, we see it's 120. That's the pressure you need to compress it into a liquid. So critical temperature is 250. That's the highest temperature you can reach and still compress it into a uh, liquid. And then at the critical temperature, you need 120 kilopascals of pressure to compress it into a liquid when it's in the gaseous state.
Normal boiling point and uh, normal melting point are the temperatures needed to boil and melt the substance when the atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury, which is the same as 101.325 kilopascals, or one atmosphere of pressure. So, what is the normal boiling point of the substance? So we need to find the boiling point when the pressure is 101.325 kilopascals. So 101, that's about here, and they're asking for boiling. Okay, so boiling occurs along this line here from between liquid and gas. So if we go across and then come down, we get 240 something. I get it at about 249. So at the normal pressure, it will boil at 249. Let's try another one. What's the uh, normal melting point of this substance? So, to find the normal melting point, melting occurs along this line between solid and liquid. So normal means 101, so we go like this, and we come down, and we get 130 something, all right? So I get about 133. See, this is 120, that's 140, so it's gotta be between 120 and 140. It's going to be about 133, right? So that's how you use a uh, phase diagram. Right. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 64, atmospheric pressure, boiling point, and phase diagrams.